Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. And in the previous video, we discussed why would price be equal to marginal utility. And now we are going to be carrying our discussion forward where I will introduce you, not exactly introduce you because I've introduced consumer surplus before, but in this video specifically, we are going to be discussing the concept of marginal and total consumer surplus. By the way, this is not an intro video on consumer surplus because if you really want to understand or you want to revise what consumer surplus is, then the consumer surplus videos are already on my YouTube channel. You can just, you know, search consumer surplus uh, by my name you'll find those videos for a brief intro to what consumer surplus is this video specifically for consumer surplus will be primarily and mostly linked with the utility part right since it's the utility playlist okay so moving forward just a brief uh, recap consumer surplus is basically what the consumers are willing to pay that is they the, the amount of money they are willing to pay for a particular good minus what they actually pay so if you're willing to pay let's say ten dollars for something because you value it at ten dollars and you think you'll get a satisfaction out of ten dollars for it right and the price is let's say six dollars so the consumer surplus for that particular unit would be four dollars it's basically your consumer welfare it's a welfare gain that you have actually made because you were ready to pay more for something that was actually costing less in the market right so because you knew the value of that product is ten dollars for you so it's a consumer gain it's a welfare gain it's a utility gain right it's a utility gain to the consumer okay <clears throat> so moving forward moving forward first of all you need to understand that there are two uh, types of consumer surplus that is uh, marginal consumer surplus and uh, total consumer surplus now it, it's not kind of i mean it's not two types exactly it's just that we can uh, measure consumer surplus by measuring it individually or in total, right? So marginal consumer surplus would be the consumer surplus of an additional unit or an extra unit or a single unit, right? Um, while total consumer surplus would be the total uh, consumer surplus that has been made on all the goods that we have purchased. So let's first start with marginal consumer surplus. So it's basically the excess utility or the extra satisfaction or the extra welfare gain a consumer gets from the consumption of an additional unit, right? So the formula is marginal consumer surplus equals to MU minus P. And it's simple, right? So MU is just like the example I gave you at the start of the video, I said that if you're valuing a product at $10 and you think that, you know, that the amount of satisfaction that you will gain is equal to ten dollars it means that you you think that the utility that you will gain is ten dollars so that is why you're ready to pay ten dollars for it so marginal utility is ten dollars you're willing to pay ten dollars for it but you actually pay six dollars for it because that's what the price of the product is which means that you have gained four dollars as a welfare gain as a consumer satisfaction right it's your it's your it's your excess satisfaction that you have you, you have you know kind of gained by paying less for something that was worth actually more to you right so that is what uh, marginal consumer surplus is while total consumer surplus on the other hand is basically your excess in terms of welfare that is your excess welfare of a person's total utility right so whatever uh, total utility that you have gained from the consumption of all the units right from the consumption of all the units that is your total utility total satisfaction that you have derived over the total amount that a person spends on it right so it's 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 kind of a uh, technical definition but i'll just simplify it for you so it's it's basically saying that uh, what i'm saying what i've written over here is that it's just the excess welfare that you're gaining that is a total utility from the consumption of a good that is to you over the total amount a person spends on it so so basically what I'm saying is, let's suppose if you're buying three units, right? If you're buying three units and the total utility that you gain or total satisfaction that you gain from the three units is, let's say, um, how much it's, let's say, $15. While, while, let's say, that the total expenditure that you have made on these, uh, you know, sort of three units is, let's say, it comes to, you know, um, $12, right? So the consumer surplus, the total consumer surplus would be how much the total consumer surplus would be uh, $3. Now, now it's because obviously the what this technically means is that your your total sat, your total satisfaction that you have derived from from consuming these three total three units is $15 while you actually paid $12 for it so you've gained an extra satisfaction of $3 which means basically it 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 simply means that um, for you, you valued the total uh, amount of satisfaction at $15, right? So it means that the 
total utility that you gain from the consumption of three units is basically fifteen dollars. So that is your total satisfaction gain minus the amount of expenditure that you are making for those uh, three units is basically twelve dollars. So you actually you end up paying less for something that is worth more to you. So again, it's just the same concept, but here we are taking the aggregates that is a total. So it's fifteen dollars worth of total utility minus twelve dollars expenditure has been made. So consumer gains a welfare. So consumer basically has a welfare gain to the consumer. Right, and this welfare gain is basically your total consumer surplus. So that's simple. Total consumer surplus is basically the total utility minus your total expenditure. Right. So this, so instead of just rote learning the formula, just understand the concept. Now I'm going to be explaining this through a table that I'll make, and let's assume that Mr. A uh, sort of uh, <clears throat> buys a particular product. It could, it could be anything. So let's say that here I'm going to be writing units. Right. So unit and then I'm going to be writing marginal utility which also represents the willingness to pay because the amount you're willing to pay is the utility that you will derive from it right willingness to pay and here I'm going to be writing the price of the products with P and then the difference that is MU minus P would give me the marginal consumer surplus right which is MU minus P so guys, let's say if I am not consuming anything, so obviously I will not have any consumer surplus, obviously, right? So I'm not consuming anything, there's, there's zero willingness to pay for it, and whatever the price is, right, sort of, whatever the price is, right? So so let's say that I buy the first unit, right? I buy the first unit, and I how much do I pay for it? Let's say I pay $6 for it, because that's the price. So $6, we're assuming that $6 is the price of the product. And for the first unit, I am willing to pay, let's say, $10, right? So the marginal consumer surplus or the extra consumer surplus is basically from the consumption of the first unit, right? So for the consumption of the first unit would be $4, okay? Understood? And then we consume the second unit. And for the second unit, I'm going to be willing to pay how much? <coughs> $9. The re simple reason is law of diminishing utility kicks in, right? So for the second unit, I'm going to be willing to pay less. And we've already studied that in the previous videos. So, uh, but I am going to be paying $6. So the consumer surplus, the marginal consumer surplus declines, but still there is a you know welfare gain. Although the welfare gain has decre decreased, but still there is a gain, right? So for a third unit, I am going to be willing to pay. That is the marginal utility would be, let's say, $8. And I'm going to be paying six dollars, so the marginal consumer surplus would be two dollars. And for the fourth unit, I am willing to pay seven dollars, but the marginal consumer surplus is uh, sorry, price is six dollars, and the marginal consumer surplus is one. And then for the fifth unit, I am going to be paying how much? I'm going to be paying six dollars, while I am willing to pay six dollars and also paying six dollars. So there's no, you know, sort of satisfaction, additional satisfaction that I've gained because I've paid exactly the amount of money that was. Uh, you know that I valued the good at that is a marginal utility equals price, right? Okay, so so the the so so the marginal consumer surplus for the first from the first unit is four, from the second is three, from the third is two, right? And from the fourth is one, and from the fifth, in fact, I should write zero. It's zero. So I've gained no additional satisfaction or welfare. So no additional welfare gain has been made because no net gain has been made, right? So because although I gained in terms of utility $6, but for that utility, that's a very interesting concept, by the way, for that utility that I gained was was actually $6, but then for that, to gain $6, I paid $6, right? So it's not that I'm not gaining anything. I did gain $6 of utility, but then I also paid $6 for it, right? So to gain, so, so understand my words, to pay... To gain six dollars, I am paying six dollars. So I mean, there's no net gain to the consumer. That is why we're writing at zero, right? Um, but if you look at over here, for to gain eight dollars of utility, I'm only paying six, only paying six dollars, which means I'm, you know, there's a net gain of two dollars, which is your consumer surplus. That is your welfare gain, right? Now, if I sum up all the marginal consumer surpluses, that is four plus three plus two plus one, so that would should sum up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right? So the total consumer surplus would be ten. So this is now representing my total consumer surplus. That is ten dollars of total consumer welfare. It's representing my consumer welfare. That is my total consumer welfare has actually been made by consuming how many units guys by consuming five units now i'm gonna now i'm not gonna be writing fifth because obviously 
Here we are taking the aggregates, that is a total, so I'm going to be saying 5 units. Understood? So be very mindful of this by consuming 5 units. So basically, I'm consuming 5 units. But so, so again, this is the marginal consumer surpluses, and this is basically the total consumer surplus. But if you even want to solve this through the formula that I just told you, that is total consumer surplus is total utility minus total expenditure, we can also solve this through this formula as well. So basically, uh, I'm going to be using a sep another color so total utility would just be the sum of the marginal utility so if i if i sum up all the marginal utilities right so for the for the first unit i'm gaining a marginal utility of 10 for the second i'm getting 9 for the third i'm getting 8 for the fourth i'm getting 7 right um, and for the fifth i'm gaining 6 uh, 6 um, dollars worth of utility so it means that i'm gaining a total utility of 40 dollars which is my total utility for the consumption of five units on the other hand you know i'm paying six dollars uh, for each unit and at the same time i am consuming five units so six dollars times five would mean that my total expenditure uh, totals at 30 dollars so if I want to calculate total consumer surplus, it is total utility minus total expenditure. Total utility is $40 minus total expenditure $30. So the total consumer surplus should be $10. That is my, and this actually is equal to the total consumer surplus that I have written over here. They both are exactly the same, right? So it's, it's the same concept. You need to understand the concept instead of just learning the formula. Understood? So this is simple, guys. This is, uh, you know, the concept of marginal consumer surplus and the total consumer surplus. And this concept is very important because, you know, from the next video onwards, we'll be deriving further concepts out of it. So make sure that you understand this. And if you have any problems, you guys can always reach out to me on my either just you know in the comments or just reach out to me on instagram now there's another very important concept that i wanted to tell you guys and now if you guys remember from the previous video right i told you that allocative efficiency right remember allocative efficiency is achieved where price equals to mu whenever p would equal mu allocative efficiency would be achieved from consumers perspective which would mean that it represents a rational, R for rational consumer, CON consumer behavior, right? Rational consumer behavior. So rational consumer behavior would mean that a consumer consumes such number of units, such number of units where P equals to MU. So obviously, should I consume the first unit? Yes. Should I consume the second? Yes. Third? Yes. Fourth? Yes. Should I consume the fifth? Yes, you should also consume the fifth because at the fifth unit, if you guys check this out, the marginal utility is how much? It's six dollars, while the price is also six dollars, which satisfies the equation P equals to MU, which means that technically we should consume how many units? Five units. So if I'm consuming five units, then definitely I am consuming how many units? I am consuming five units. This satisfies my allocative efficiency principle as well. And this is the point where I have maximized my maximized my consumer surplus so if this equation is met it means that i've also maximized my consumer surplus and that actually represents my uh, my rational behavior and my um, the that that you know consumer allocative efficiency has been achieved and consumers have acted rationally and efficiently and hence allocated their resources in the most efficient possible way such that that they have been able to you know do mention this point such that that they have been able to maximize their consumer surplus perfect now guys this, this is now i'm going to be moving on i'm going to be further elaborating this concept about you know maximization of consumer surplus through the principles of p equals to mu but for that you need to wait till my next video i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you all around in my next video until then take care